Last week we discussed the uh, pendulum with sour friction and with friction, right? So in the case of uh, in the case we, with our friction case, the pendulum will oscillate for forever, right? Because and after you add this friction, um, it might slow down. The oscillation might disappear. Intuitively, it might merge to the green point. Right, because the amplitude of oscillation will decay with time because of friction. Something missing here, right? Based on this governing equation, which is you can obtain this equation from from the course you learn in your undergrad, such as dynamics, right? From Dongyuan, you can get this. And based on this governing equation, you assume there are two states, x1, x2, which represent theta and theta dot. So you can write down, you, or you can modify this governing equation to this dynamics, which is the dynamics we have talked about in this master for for the nonlinear dynamics systems. Right? You have two states. You have two differential equations. And based on this dynamics, which we, you can find, or you can select any variable function you like, and we choose this one. Okay. And after you substitute the dynamics into the time derivative of this Liouville function, we obtain this form, which is uh, an SD, right? Because the x1 term is missing from from v dot, so it's an SD. So, but uh, intuitively, because of friction, you can imagine that this pendulum will slow down and Maybe uh, as t go to infinity, it will exactly become um, uh, the theta will go to zero, right? But based on this v dot, we cannot conclude that theta will converge to zero because it's an S D, right? Or in other or or. Uh, or you can imagine if you want to conclude c that goes to zero as t go to infinity, you need the, the conclusion is asymptotically stable, right? And the requirement for asymptotically stable is v is p d and v dot is n d, right? But obviously v dot here is an s d, so the best that you can conclude is only stable, right? But what you observe here is Asymptotically stable, you may want to, right? So what what's the disconnection? What's missing here? You know something wrong, right? So uh, to bridge the gap, we need to introduce another theory, which is called uh, invariant set. Okay. So invariant set. Okay. We will introduce this. In few minutes. So the problem with these dynamics, so we know by observation you, you can plot because this is the friction term. Okay, so you can plot the f uh, the phase portrait of these dynamics. Okay, of these dynamics, which is. Which shows that you will converge to the green point zero zero as t go to infinity, although they are multiple equivalent point one two three. Okay. So, what's wh what's missing from here? So, uh, based only based on only these two equations, we know that v will never increase for any x1, x2, right? Because v dot is always negative or zero if x2 is zero, right? So v dot is either negative or zero, never greater than zero. So v never increase, okay? So V will decrease for whatever x belong to R exclude zero, right? And x one can be any any real numbers. 
And if x2 is 0, okay, and x1 is any r, v is constant, right? v is constant means v dot is 0, right? When x2 is 0, v dot is 0, which, which implies v is constant, right? So v is constant for these conditions. But even though x, so the best from these two equations, the best you can say is x2 is 0 and v is constant. But v is constant doesn't imply v is 0. Okay. So how can you further say something about x1? Okay. So for v is constant, okay, for v is constant, it could be, for example, if v is 5, this is the level set. Okay. V is 5. You, you cut the label when v is 5, and, or you cut for v is 1, is here, and it's this uh, label set is like this, okay. So for now, we can only say v is constant for x2 is equal to 0, but we wonder further, want to uh, realize, figure out what x1 is. So, to figure out what is x1, um, here we introduce an invariant set. So what is the invariant set? A set M is said to be an invariant set with respect to some dynamics, okay, x dot equal to fx. If initially x is in M, then for all time x will stay in M, okay. Then M is called invariant set of, of this Dynamics. Invariant set means if you are initially in the set, say if you start from here, x0, you say this is the invariant set M. So initially, x0 is in M, right? x0 is in this set called M. If that's true, and using this, or based on these dynamics, x0, it can go, go any, 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 anywhere, right? Based on these dynamics. But if xt for any t, for any t, it always stay in M. It never, it never leave this M set. We call M is the invariant set of these dynamics. Okay, and on. So how how do you guarantee this? We don't know. We, we don't know the solution, right? We don't know. We don't know this. We don't know what's the solution of xt. How we guarantee? How we find the M? or how we guarantee that exists an M that x0 never live if it initially inside the M. Is that clear? For, the, for this definition, okay? Can, can, you, can, can, you, can you imagine, okay? So, uh, so, so uh, go back to the previous slides. We have v dot equal to, to minus c over m x2 squared, right? And this can be used to find the invariant set, okay? For example, um, So this is V, right? The, the height of this uh, 3D coordinate is V. And the face portrait line lies in X1 and X2. So if V dot 
if v dot is v dot is non-positive. V is bounded by some V bar, right? Do you, did you agree? If V dot is non-positive, which means it's negative or zero, right? Which implies V will never increase or never greater than some upper bound V bar, right? So V bar could be the intersection of this. Right. Right. Because of this condition, okay? It never increases. So V cannot be greater than this level. Okay. So what's the pro so now we're going to see what's the face portrait based on this condition. What's the face portrait? So the projection of this is some some area, right? Right. And because V is V cannot be greater than V bar, that means that uh, the projection is here and this is the area of invariant set, right? Because any X which involves in this area cannot go outside this area. Otherwise if it go outside this area, the projection will be greater than the projection to V will be greater than V bar, right? Okay. So, so when you see this, it means that you can find a corresponding invariant set. Okay. So, what are the example of invariant set equivalent point, right? If it sta stays in the equivalent point, it never leaves the equivalent point, okay? Because at the equivalent point, the dynamics is zero, right? At equivalent point, what's the property? So at the equivalent point, it's stationary. It doesn't go anywhere, right? So once it stay in equivalent point, it's it, it always in the equivalent point, right? So equivalent point is itself is an um, invariant set. And uh, limit cycles, like uh, if this is the phase, and once it enter this orbit, it never leave this orbit, right? So this orbit is also an invariant set, okay? And the third one is this example. V dot is equal to zero. When V dot equal to zero, which means V is a constant, right? V is a constant means is is in is this, okay? So this area will be the invariant set, okay? Don't go on. But we don't know what, where the solution, where the x is. We only know is in this set. We don't know the solution, right? The such theory is the theory that we can use to bridge the gap in the pendulum case. Because I say that in the pen pendulum case, we observe that the system will be asymptotically stable. But, but the best we can prove using the Debord function is this, right? And which Darren says, which cannot be concluded that uh, it's a synthetically stable. So this theory will bring the gap, okay? Bridge the gap between the two. So uh, the such theory says for uh, omega belong to D is a compact set. Pa compact set means it's bounded, it's a bounded set, okay? It's, it's a finite set. And that is positively invariant with respect to this dynamics. Positively invariant means uh, it's invariant for t greater than zero. Okay.
we say this is D. And omega is belong to D. Omega might be somewhere here, which call is omega. So omega is belong to D. Right? Omega is inside D. And it's a compact set that is partially invariant with respect to this dynamics. Means for some initial given some initial condition here, okay, the trajectory will always stay inside here, never leave this area based on the dynamics of this. Okay. Then let V be some continuity differentiable function, or you can say it's a Lyapunov function, which is uh, V dot is uh, smaller, not, not greater than zero, in, and which is this, right? Or you can say it's negative semi-definite. Okay in omega, in omega, okay. Um, so it, it's exactly the case that we, we, we conf confirmed before, right? It's exactly this case, right? V dies, it is PD, P, uh, it, V dies and SD, sorry, okay, Dama. Okay, V dies and SD. Right. For ND, it had to be negative, right, in omega. Then let E be the set of a point in omega where it satisfies this condition. V dot is equal to zero. So in this case, what is V dot equal to zero? What is V dot equal to zero? What does this mean? x2 is 0. And this is what? And how about x1? Any real number, right? Because any x1 doesn't change v equal to 0, OK? So it's, so this set, for, an, for this set, we say it's e. E, say E is here, and M is the largest invariant set in E. Then every solution star in omega approach M as t goes to infinity. So there's another set M in E. At every solution, wherever you you start inside omega, it will converge to M. Okay, this is Lassalle's theory. So it, it's, maybe it's hard to imagine. I will give you an example later, okay? So uh, as we mentioned here, omega is inside D, and omega is only set, satisfy this condition, okay? Because for x dot is less or equal to zero, which implies x2 have to satisfy this. Right, S2 could be any number, uh, right? Well, it doesn't matter if you exclude zero or not, okay? So it could be, so, to, so omega can be X2 belong to R, X1 belong to R, right? Based on this, right? S2 can be any number and X1 could be any number that theta will still satisfy this condition, okay? okay? And for E is this condition, okay? And M, well, M is not mentioned here, but um, for M, you can f use in this condition, the dynamics, okay? So it has it uh, If you go back to this face portrait, it will be interesting, okay? Because, so for this, it's a line, right? It's a line which is x2 equal to 0, x2 equal to 0 is this line, right? And it says this line is an invariant set. And using this Lyapunov function, okay, using this condition, the best you can say is the system will converge to this line, right? But if you use another condition, which is the dynamic, you can further narrow down to some point on the line, 
which are uh, the uh, and if you find those maybe only one point in the line which is zero zero, then you can conclude that uh, the system is is entirely stable. And that's what we want to do next. Okay, is that clear? Come on. So. Uh, omega, omega is belong to D. Is in D. D could be, and that could be in R. So this is the largest set, any real number. Okay, because omega had to be compact. Compact. Compact is it can't be Omega in D. Okay. So just some definition. OK, so next, so back to this example. Now we have, you, you know all the tools. You know the invariant set. You know, given this, how to find the invariant set, right? Although the, inv the conclusion from this invariant set is not enough to conclude that this system is entirely stable. But uh, we will use invariant set theory to, to narrow down the conditions. So what we will do is, um, okay, we find this, which is here. The next you can do is you go back to this dynamics. Okay, you go back to this dynamics, which is this. We are now solving solving the solutions. We just use this dynamics. So based on this condition, this condition says x two will stay at zero forever, right? Okay, so. If x2 stay at 0 for it, forever after some time, it also implies x2 it stay at 0, OK? It's always in 0, which implies x2 that will be 0. Right? Because it's just at 0, it doesn't move. If it doesn't move, it will be 0. Using these conditions, right? This implies this, and you substitute back to here the second equation. This is zero, right? From the second equation, x two die zero. And what will you say in here? Or what would be x1? This had to be 0, right? So x1 will be what? Will be 0 or m pi, right? And also, e, 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 uh, any is any any integer, okay. right? Include zero. So x one could be zero. So zero zero will be one of the equivalent point, or it will converge to zero zero. Okay. So this is the contribution from. So this conclusion is from the contribution of invariant set. So if you don't use invariant set, the best you can conclude is this, which is a line. Right. Thank you, Okay. Any any question? Hey, Bing Xian, no problem. Huh? X two die equal to zero. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Problem is what? 这个怎么来的 ？Because here, so v dot, so this is invariant set, right? V dot equal to zero is an invariant set. Based on this, right? Eventually, v dot for whatever x two, 不管 x two 是正的、负的、零，最终。v 大是会变到零去，因为它一直在减少嘛 ，v 一直在降低嘛
，对不对？这这个 equation 告诉你什么 ？v 这个 v dot 一直是负的值，什么时候才不是负的 ？x two 是零的时候，对不对？那 x two 是零的时候，表示说 v dot 就是零了，那它就不会再动了，对不对？那它不会动的时候，这时候 x two 是多少？是零吗？啊，它就一直在零，它不会再动了嘛，对吧？那不就是这个 conclusion 吗？它在 x two 是零 ，x one 呢可以是任意数，因为它没有在这里面 ，right？ x one is not here， so this implies this eventually， right？ and and since it's equal to zero， it stay at zero for all time， it implies x two is zero and x dot two dot is zero， 对不对？ Then you can use the dynamics. Then you can you can conclude this. 懂吗 ？Okay. So the M set, this M set, you to to find this M set, you can use whatever x in the E set. Let's satisfy this dynamics, okay? Which is this? Then you can find the M set, okay? So, so did we did did we solve this ODE? No, right? We use we only use this invariance theory, right? We never solve the ODE. We never trying to find the solution of this ODE. But we still can prove it converges to x one, x two equal to zero zero, right? So, 这样懂吗So if you start from here, and uh, you know eventually it will reach to here. Okay, but but the tra transcend response is missing. Okay, you don't know what happened between the in the initial uh, from t equal to zero. And t to infinity, you don't know what happened in between because they require the knowledge of the solution, right? But you know eventually it will converge to the grand point, right? So, in the in your first control system course, in I think in your third year of your in in your undergrad, right? Third year, 你们第一堂自动控制课它叫什么？ So in the first control class in your in your career, what what did they teach? They teach transient response, right? They teach uh, s squared plus omega n s plus omega n squared equal to zero. So, something like this, right? And they teach what is right time. Uh, This is maybe x t or something, right? And this is here's a one. And they say this is some rise time, right? Okay. In in which case they are discussing what happened in between, what happened in between, and we call this is transient response. Right, how fast from t equal to zero to reach to your uh, state input? Right, how fast? They are discussing the uh, this transient response, but they all require the knowledge of. Um, uh, so th this is obtain, okay, the theory using to discuss these parameters with respect to the response. Are basing on the solution of linear 
ODEs. Okay. 懂吗？ So this is a linear ODE, right? You can you can solve the solution of this. You can obtain this, right? You can you can obtain the solution, and you compare the coefficients here. Maybe say uh, four, uh, three. Okay, you you can compare the coefficient here, right? And you say, oh, if my uh, omega is some value, then the response will be higher, however. But let the knowledge is based on the, 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 the solution of this ODE, because we can solve this ODE, right? and you compare the parameters, and see if the higher value of this, which means this parameter is higher, then the solu they can change the solutions, right? And you, in which case you can have a higher, a faster response. Okay, they all discuss about the transient response, but in the above theory, there's no way you can discuss what happened in between. Okay, we only know if you start from somewhere, you can converge to somewhere. Okay, 能懂吗？ Because you have no knowledge about the solution to. The nonlinear ODE, okay, in general. So this another corollary which is similar to the uh, we use here. So that S equal to zero be a green point for some dynamics x star equal to f x, and that V maybe from D to R be a continuous differentiable positive definite functions on the domain D, okay, and S is the invariant set which is similar to the set E defined here, okay? And suppose that there is no solution can stay identically in S other than the trivial solution, okay? Trivial solution means the origin, okay? No other solution can stay in this set other than the, than the, the trivial solution. Then the, this trivial solution is asymptotically stable. Okay, so what we did from the previous case, or in the pendulum case, is we first find out what it, this set, right? And we use the dynamics to find that only zero, zero, x1, x2, zero, zero can stay in this E set, and it's asymptotically stable. This is exactly the definition from the book, from this book. So the question is, how did you choose or select a Lyapunov function? Well, there's no, based on your experience. But if you are, uh, usually when you do research, you are not discuss, you are not doing some research that no one did before. So usually you have some reference about how to select the Lyapunov functions. Okay. So usually it doesn't come from nowhere. There are some references. But for nonlinear systems, the selection of the above function is, is not obvious. But for linear systems, as I mentioned before, you can use LMI. You can use LMI to find the, uh, the above function. Linear matrix inequality. V is x transpose P x transpose. This is the above function. And for some dynamics, okay. And how, how did you come up with this P? Usually it's from the LMI. So the LMI will be like this. Um, A transpose P plus P A uh, plus two B P, P 
e some i identity matrix greater than zero. So you solve this ILMI, this is A is known, A is known. P is unknown. Okay, if you find we're trying to find P using this inequality. If you find P then this is your level function. So A is known. B is known. I is known. Only P is unknown. Okay. Now Because if you if you have a time derivative, you can get uh, right. Let's get away from b dot and what is x dot transpose? It's a x transpose. Right from here, px plus x transpose p a x, which is x transpose a transpose p x plus x transpose p a x, and that's equal to x transpose a transpose p p plus p a. 你就把它微分, you, you take the derivative and substitute these dynamics, you got this. And if this is negative definite, V dot is negative definite, right? So the, this LMI, this LMI is trying to find a P given A that this is negative. Because if this is negative, V dot is and D. So in this case, this Leopold function can be computed using LMI. Another condition for for this p is p had to be greater than zero because v had to be uh, p d. Okay. So when you when you set up when you're trying to solve for this P, you can use MATLAB to solve for P uh, given A. Okay. And for there are many P that satisfy the, this condition. Okay, but for those you need to constrain P to be greater than zero. Okay. And I remember last year that a student Ask me a question. So he say, if I find a v, given the dynamic system, I, I find a v, and use the Diopold theory, and the Diopold theory, the, the conclusion found that is, okay, v is p d, but v dot is, is. Is not a D. Can I say system? The system is is not stable, not asymptotically stable, or not stable. I say not really because if this V that doesn't work, we need to find another V. 
right? Because v, th this theory is necessary is only sufficient conditions. Okay, if you find v that is p d and v that is n d, you you guarantee this system is asymptotic stable. But if it, but if you cannot find that v, it doesn't imply system is unstable. It could be that the v you find is not a good candidate. Okay, you, maybe the next time you try a different v, and you, you guarantee that is s. That could be a case, Doma. Because it's suffi sufficient condition. Sufficient means if that's true, this must be true. But if it's not true, it doesn't imply this is not true. Okay, Doma. If it's true, must be true. Not true, you can conclude it's not stable. Okay, Doma. Sufficient condition. Radially unbounded functions. So this radially unbounded function is usually to be used on the above function v. Okay, so let v be a function mapping from d to r, which is continually differentiable functions, and v is said to be radially unbounded if v goes to infinity as long as x norm goes to infinity. Okay. Uh, anyone knows? Who? Anyone knows what is x norm? You want to put that x norm is or x x norm or two norm? Usually we say it's x norm, but here is two norm. And it's defined x. For example, if x contains two elements, x norm is x1 squared plus x2 squared. Uh, for, for general case, okay, it's x norm. Similar to the Euclidean distance. Okay. So so this function is said to be radial among the if v goes to infinity as x norm goes to infinity. Okay. So in example one, is it it, it is ready unbounded, right? Because for x norm go to infinity, v will go to infinity. Okay. How about example two? If x1, x norm go to infinity, will v go to infinity? Not really, because of cosine is bounded by 1, right? If x1, x2, if you try 0 infinity, what, what is x norm? x norm will go to infinity, right? Do that. Right? Do that. And what is the V? V go to infinity, ma? No. Because when X2 goes to infinity, this guy is upper bounded by 1. Right? No matter what X is. And X1 is 0. So it's not go to infinity. It goes it goes to 1. Okay. So example example 2 is not readily unbounded. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's just a definition and that will be used later. Okay. So we just first uh, define this and give you some examples. Okay. So example 3 is it readily unbounded? No, right? Because again, this function can be lower and upper bounded, right? This function is lower bounded by what? Zero. Upper bounded by one. 
对吧 ？Is lower and upper bound bounded by some some value. So lower bound bounded by what? If x one x two is zero, is zero is lower bounded by zero, right? If x one x x one goes to infinity, it upper bounded by one, right? So ah,、uh, so which is similar to this, right? If x two go to infinity, x one go to infinity, but ah.、Uh, This could be multiplied by bounded by one, and for this、uh, x two could be zero. Okay. And、uh, and how about this case? Example four. Yes or no? Yes. Raise your hand. Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Is it radially unbounded or not? Can you find that x one or x two go to infinity, but v is not infinity? Can you? If you try x one, x two. Is infinity and infinity. X norm goes to infinity, right? But what is v?、Um, for v to be x one minus x two square, this is zero square, which is zero, right? Do they? So it's not. Not really, really unbounded. Okay, 懂吗 ？Okay， 有问题吗？不然就继续啊。顶线有问题吗？哪一个？两个都不会啊，比如说 ，so OK for OK this is case one for the case two you try this and you try x one x two OK and v is zero. So it's not really both are not real 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 really unbounded. <coughs> okay. And、uh, so bef before these slides, we all discuss autonomous systems, right? We all only discuss autonomous system where we assume that the in the dynamics we the dynamics is not explicitly Function of time, right? But for non-autonomous systems, usually in your dynamics, it could be depend on explicitly depend on time. Okay, so they require another new, some other new、uh, theories to prove stabilities. Okay, so in the next few slides, we will define some functions that will be used. To prove stability for non-autonomous systems, okay. So we define non-autonomous systems before, right? So f is this dynamics is really depend on time. So here f is a piecewise continuous in T, and local locally diffusive locally diffusive in X, okay. And this is a domain that contains the origin. And the origin is a equivalent point of this dynamics. So, anyone know the know what's this expression? 
So f is mapping from this domain with this domain to this r n domain because this is the domain for the first argument t. This is the domain for the second argument x. Okay, and mapping to r n because the n the state is n dimension. Okay. So um, here we define what is uniform. We we, we define stable and um, stable and asymptotically stable before, right? Here we define uniformly stable and uh, uniformly convergent. Okay. So what is uniform? So uniform usually it de it doesn't depend on time. Okay. So uniformly stable is defined as given any epsilon which is greater than zero, and there's another delta function, which is a function of epsilon, also greater than zero. Then if it initially, the initial condition of this is bounded by the delta epsilon, then xt will also bounded by epsilon for all time. Okay, so it's very sim similar to the definition of stable, right? Okay. But here, um, epsilon and delta epsilon don't depend on time, so we call it uniformly. Okay. And uniformly convergent again, the different, the only difference with the previous one is it, it goes to zero, as t goes to infinity. Okay. So an uniformly asymptotic stable means that. Is both uniformly stable and uniformly convergent. Okay, so should be simple. And globally, uniformly asymptotically stable means it's uniformly asymptotically stable for any initial conditions. Okay, if it doesn't depend on initial conditions, we say it's global, no matter where the initial condition is. Anyone did? So uniformly means it doesn't depend on time. Globally means it doesn't depend on initial conditions. So globally uniformly means it doesn't depend on time and initial condition. You, no matter where it is, you will come to the origin. Uh, uniformly, okay. This okay. 那会跟这些方寻有关,这些方寻的定义有关 okay. So uh, we, we have defined PSD function before, right? But those are for the autonomous systems But for non-autonomous systems, PSD had different, a little bit different definitions Because uh, before we defined PSD which is usually v is not a function of t, but now here that w is a function of time because for non autonomous systems. Okay. So let a function w defined as wxt is continually differentiable with respect to all its arguments, either x or t, then wxt is said to be psd in d. If it's a zero at zero, okay. If it's zero, w is zero when x is zero, and it's always greater or equal to zero. For x is not at zero. Anywhere not at zero. Okay. Melody. So what is PD? PD to define PD is not straightforward. Okay, um, to define PD, so this condition is same as before, as PSD. Okay, but the second condition is different. So in the second condition, you need to find another PD function, which is which is is not depend on time. Okay, this function only depend on x, not on time. And you need to find 
and PD function, PD non-autonomous system, fun uh, non-autonomous function, let lower bound this W function. If you can find this, then we say W is PD function. Okay. Now, and in contrast, this is PD, right? And for a decreasing function, it's different. So here we need to find the upper bound, okay? V now upper bound W. But in the previous case, the PD function, V lower bound W, okay? So decreasing function, if we say W is a decreasing function, if you can find its upper bound, which is a, not, it is a PD function, PD autonomous function, okay? Which is done bit depend on time, okay? Autonomous PD function, okay? So for example, uh, this is WXT, okay? Because it depends not only on X, but also depend on time. Before, we, we don't see time elements in the function, right? Because for autonomous si systems. But now, uh, they are f in the function, they, they, they have some time elements. So is this function decreasing? Is this function satisfy this condition? Can you find a V, the upper bound is? Yes, right? What is V? Can you find a V? Let's satisfy this condition. Because this guy always small or equal to one. Right? If A is greater than zero. When t is 0, this guy is 1. And for t is greater than 0, this guy is smaller than 1. So it's always, which implies this condition for your x. You can find v, which is this. Right? Do that. So it's a decreasing function, and it's PD, right? It's an autonomous PD function, right? It doesn't depend on time, and it's a PD function. So second example, can you find the V to show W is a decreasing function? Okay, because it's t square, you cannot find another uh, find the upper bound of this. They don't depend on time. Okay, you can right? So relatively unbounded functions. So is this one a relatively unbounded function, which is defined as for x, t, x norm goes to infinity, w will go to infinity, and uniformly on time. Means for any t, 
if this is set, this satisfy, this will satisfy. Is this W the case? This W is equal? So this term will go to infinity for sure, right? But but if we multiply these terms, it's hard to say. So it's not. Okay. It's not. And how about this one? This one, it, well, it doesn't explicitly depend on time, right? But is it radially unbounded? No, right? Why? You can try You can try x1 go to infinity, x2, 0, which give you the x norm goes to infinity, right? But w goes to 1. OK. So it's not radially unbounded. In this case, even x2 is not x2 doesn't go to infinity. This term might go to infinity as, as long as t go to infinity, right? So if x2 go to infinity, this term must go to infinity. Okay, the whole term, must, the second term must go to infinity. And for this case, is it really unbounded? In Jordan, no. So this t this this time terms doesn't change doesn't change w much, right? Because it's lower and upper bounded. It's lower bounded by z So check check out this first. What's the lower bound of this? What's the lower bound? It's the lower bound of this. When t equal to zero, right? Which is twelve. And t go to infinity, which go to one. So it's upper and lower bounded by two constants. So you can eliminate this. Okay. You don't now. We don't need to care about these terms. Just look at these terms. Okay. So it's radially unbounded. Don't worry. And um, you can also consider the this term in the bracket, in the bracket first, right? Come on, you can first consider this term. I want to make it bigger and bigger. Okay. No problem. You can consider this term first. So we lower bounded by one, lower up, lower bounded by one, upper bounded by infinity. Okay. So we want to show that if x norm is go to infinity, this term goes to infinity, right? So this term, this t term, is lower bounded by one.
right? It's lower bounded by one for t greater than zero. It's lower bounded by one, upper bounded by infinity, right? Which implies um, if x two go to infinity, the whole term will go to infinity, right? Right, so you don't need to worry about these terms, Dama. But if, but if, if this term is exponential minus t, and what's the lower bound? What's the lower bound? Zero. Upper bound is one. And this zero could be dangerous, right? It might prevent W go to infinity as T go to infinity, right? So you need to be careful. And in this case, it's not really unbounded. Okay. Like if x1 is zero, x2 is infinity. And as t go to infinity, this term can be zero, right? And w will not go to infinity, so it's not really unbounded, come on. And same as the first example, right? You have is some potential minus t here that prevent w go to infinity, okay? So it's not really unbounded. Yang How about? So the, all this question will be in, in the exam. So pay attention. So how about we modify example four to this? We change the power from two to one. From two to one, is it already unbounded? Yes. No. Yes, the rest of your hand. No, rest of your hand. No. Right. What happened if t go to infinity? So let's. Let's check out this term. What's the upper bound? What's the lower bound? Just you just check two cases, right? For t equal to zero, what's what's the value of this? It goes to one over twelve. Right? And for t go to infinity, it's what? Zero. Zero. So it goes, it could go to zero. So it, it won't, you cannot say it's already unbounded. Zero prevent the whole term go to infinity. Okay. So V1 is the lower, so W is a function of time. It can vibrating, it's oscillating with time, okay? But uh, no matter who, what time it is, the oscillation, it darren, is always bound lower and upper bounded by these two functions, okay? So we say V1 is the lower bound. V1 is the lower bound, V2 is the upper bound, okay? And for the def based on the definition of decreasing, we're trying to find the upper bound of W, right? We're trying to find this V2. And for, uh, for the positive definite PD function, we're trying to find the lower bound, right? Look at that. We're trying to find the lower bound. We're trying to find a lower bound, okay? 
the PD fun to put a PD function, we, we find the lower bound of W if it exists. And for decreasing function, we're trying to find its upper bound. Okay, that's the one. So what? So we we this we, we mentioned so many dif uh, definitions: decreasing and rated unbounded and PD PSD for non-autonomous functions. So what what what's the motivation for that uh, definitions? Well, that can be used to prove the stability for non-autonomous systems. For example, here, given some non-autonomous system, okay, x star equal to f x t is non-autonomous because the dynamics depend on t. Okay, containing the origin x equal to zero, and v is continuing differentiable functions, and it's lower and upper bounded by w one w two. Okay, same as this w one w two. Darren is pretty depend on time. Okay, and this v is the variable function for this dynamics. So the time derivative of v, which is this, right? Because it had two variables. One is it had two arguments. One is time. So when you take the time derivative of v, you need to uh, do the partial first with respect to time, and do the chain rule with respect uh, uh, in order to introduce the second the dynamics of the second element or second argument, right? So this is time derivative of this v. Okay. So if you can you find this v that satisfies the condition. And we will say that x0 is uniformly stable because it's uh is that's over equal to zero. Okay. So this is the um the stability and uh, proof, the tool you can use to prove the stability for non-autonomous systems. Okay. So it's PD because it's lower bounded by W1, V is lower bounded by W1, and it's decreasing because it's upper bounded by W2. Okay. So you need to find the first step. To prove the stability, you need to find the overall function that is lower bounded by its PD and its decreasing function. Okay, V had to satisfy both conditions. Then you can say it's qualified to be the overall function in the first step. Then you substitute the dynamics and trying to see if this condition holds. Okay. Then you can say it's uniformly stable. Uniformly stable. Not just stable, but uniformly stable, because this star, this v is lower in upper bounded by some autonomous PD functions. If its time derivative is smaller or equal to zero, it guarantees a decay or or, or non-increasing, right? Right. So it's stable, uniformly stable. Because it's bounded by, it's our lower and upper bounded by some range. Given any x, given say x equal, given some x, is lower, say x1, okay? This w is, this w uh, at x1, this w. Is lower and upper bounded by v1 x1, v2 x2, right? And these are not dependent on time, okay? Although v w change with time, but it's remain bounded, right? So it's uniform. Remember, we say uniform means it doesn't depend on time, okay? So it's uniformly stable, and gamma, gamma. So. Uh, what does this? The, another question is, what does this level function looks like? Uh, here's an example. This this is one of my paper, okay. And the level function is here. It depends on 
states, but also depend on not only depend on state, but also depend on time. E1, E2 are the tracking air, okay, and it's states. X tilde is also states are states, okay. So this V is bounded by states. So R is the time derivative of X tilde dot. So R depend on time, and R is in the Liouville function. Okay, R is function of time. So that's why you, you see time here. And we, based on this Liouville function, we find the lower and upper bound. Beta 1 phi square and beta 2 phi square. And phi is the, uh, this argument. So this lower bound doesn't depend on time. And upper, upper bound also doesn't depend on time. Okay. So in the stability, you can say it's uniformly stable or uh, uniformly, yeah, in this case, it's uniformly stable, okay.